The Rime of the Ancient Mariner, Samuel Taylor Coleridge. In this module, you will get an overview of the poem, learn about its poet, and listen to the recitation of the first part of the poem. An overview. The Rime of the Ancient Mariner is based on a dream that the poet's friend had. It is written in the form and style of a folk ballad. The original poem is divided into seven parts, but only the first two have been taken up. Three guests were going for a wedding feast. One of them was hypnotized into stopping and listening to the old sailor's tale. The sailor narrated the story of how his ship set out on a voyage and described in detail the weather that it met. He told the wedding guest about the visit by an albatross and about his wanton act of killing it. How its spirit haunted them and how the fellow sailors reacted to the killing. The poem deals with themes of retribution and responsibility and also has the supernatural element in the latter parts of the poem, regarded a masterpiece of poetic craftsmanship. It conveys the message, He prayeth well, who loveth well. About the Poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge was one of the greatest romantic poets of English. He was born on 21st October, 1772, in Devonshire, and breathed his last on 25th July, 1834. Coleridge was a close friend and associate of another equally great poet, William Wordsworth. This poem first appeared in Lyrical Ballads in 1798, which was brought out in association with William Wordsworth. This was followed by his other two famous poems, Christabel and Kubla Khan. His lectures on philosophy and Shakespeare in 1818 brought him further acclaim. The Rime of the Ancient Mariner Samuel Taylor Coleridge Listen to the first part of the poem. It is an ancient mariner, and he stoppeth one of three. By thy long grey beard and glittering eye. Now wherefore stoppest thou me? The bridegroom's doors are open wide, and I am next of kin. The guests are met, the feast is set. Mayst hear the merry din. He holds him with his skinny hand. There was a ship, quoth he. Hold off, unhand me, grey beard loon. Eft soon's his hand dropped he. He holds him with his glittering eye. The wedding guest stood still and listens like a three years child. The mariner hath his will. The wedding guest sat on a stone. He cannot choose but hear. And thus spake on that ancient man, the bright-eyed mariner. The ship was cheered. The harbour cleared. Merrily did we drop. Below the kirk, below the hill, below the lighthouse top. The sun came up upon the left. Out of the sea came he, and he shone bright, and on the right went down into the sea. Higher and higher every day, till over the mast at noon, the wedding guest here beat his breast, for he heard the loud bassoon. The bride hath paced into the hall. Red as a rose is she.
nod their heads before her goes the merry minstrel see the wedding guest he beat his breast yet he cannot choose but hear and thus speak on that ancient man the bright eyed mariner and now the storm blast came and he was tyrannous and strong he struck with his overtaking wings and chased us south along with sloping masts and dipping prow as who pursued with yell and blow still treads the shadow of his foe and forward bends his head the ship drove fast loud roared the blast and southward i we fled and now there came both mist and snow and it grew wondrous cold and ice mast high came floating by as green as emerald and through the drifts the snowy clifts did send a dismal sheen nor shapes of men nor beasts we can the ice was all between the ice was here the ice was there the ice was all around it cracked and growled and roared and howled like noises in a swoon at length did cross an albatross through the fog it came as if it had been a christian soul we hailed it in god's name it ate the food it near had eat and round and round it flew the ice did split with a thunder fit the helmsman steered us through and a good south wind sprung up behind the albatross did follow and every day for food or play came to the mariner's hollow in mist or cloud on mast or shroud it perched for vespers nine whiles all the night through fog smoke white glimmered the white moonshine God save thee ancient mariner from the fiends that plague thee thus why lookst thou so with my crossbow i shot the albatross transcript
Summary In this module, you got an overview of the poem, learnt about its poet, and listened to the recitation of the first part of the poem. Extract 4 Let's understand the fourth extract. God save thee, ancient mariner, from the fiends that plague thee thus. Why lookst thou so? With my crossbow, I shot the albatross. Paraphrase. While narrating the details of his voyage, the old sailor had a strange expression. This made the wedding guest ask God to protect the old sailor. When he asked the sailor why he bore that expression, the former told the wedding guest that he had shot the albatross with his crossbow. Reference to context. Let's attempt some reference to context questions based on this extract. What brings about a change in the mood of the old sailor? The narration reaches the crucial point for which the old sailor was atoning. His guilt brings about the change of expression. It is so obvious that the wedding guest is prompted to ask him why he looked like that. What is a crossbow? Why has it been mentioned in the poem? A crossbow is a type of bow and arrow, but is much more powerful than an ordinary one. Has a trigger to launch the arrow. The old sailor used it to kill the albatross that brought acute suffering to his fellow sailors. Killing an innocent albatross was the reason for his retribution. What does the old sailor tell him? The old sailor told the wedding guest that he had shot the innocent bird without a reason. That was the main reason behind his guilt and atonement. Summary. In this module, you have learned to paraphrase the poem and attempts based on it.